Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Curtis with That Turbid Akuda. Um, today we're gonna talk about how I converted the front end of my truck over to five lug. Um, I'm gonna put it up in the air. I'm actually gonna pull it apart, pull the hub off, and give you guys a full rundown. I'm gonna let you look at what had to be machined, talk about what parts I used, and then while we have it up, we'll go ahead and look at the uh, front suspension, uh, tubular A-arms, and uh, the Viking hybrid coilover. So what I'm gonna do is flip the camera around, jack the front of this truck up and get it torn down, and then I'll come back and we'll talk about it. See ya. Okay, so as you can see, um, I've got it all torn apart. So let's talk about it real quick. So, as far as parts, here's what you're gonna need. Right here, you're looking at a 2000 Crown Victoria hub. Um, obviously, you can get them things anywhere. They're really easy to find. Um, that's not even a, a big deal. Um, I think I probably got all my stuff from Rock Auto. So, that's the hub part of it. Right there, rotor, uh, 2000. Ford Explorer four-wheel drive uh, rotor. Um, again, same thing is you know you could order both your hubs and both your rotors from Rock Auto, no problem. Um, now to keep in mind, uh, my truck's a 2000, right? So from '97 up until what was it, 2002, your calibers and your spindles are different than the 0304. Um, if you notice, they have these real, real, real small pins um, that, you know, obviously that's what the caliber floats on that are a bolt. Uh, 03 and 04 Dakota actually have bigger brakes on them, a uh, bigger caliber, bigger rotor. Um, it's somewhat of a better foundation to start with. Um, the only difference is uh, you can use actually a Mustang rotors 
in a Mustang hub. I'm not sure the year, but if you do a little bit of research, that should be easier to find. A lot of guys were going to the junkyard getting 0304 uh, Dakota Durango and then getting the machine work done to convert it over to five lug. Um, as you really, you know, you kind of open things up, you can actually move to like a, a bigger, you know, Brembo aftermarket caliber um, and whatnot. Uh, for me right now, it wasn't a big deal. That's why I said I just got 2000 Crown Vic, 2000 Fort Shoulder four wheel drive. So what I did is I pulled my knuckle off, I took my press, and there's this pin, okay? So you get this pin, you press this pin out either on your own or you get the machine shop to press it down. And all you do is have them machine that pin to accept this uh, hub. I mean, it's really, really, uh, it's fairly easy to get done. Um, the only thing you're gonna notice is if you look real close, when you machine this pin down or get this machine pin down to fit that hub, you're gonna have about a half inch roughly of this bearing that doesn't touch anything. So what they have to do is you have to get them to make a spacer. Uh, in that case, what my machinist did is they actually ordered a nut that was this thread, turn that nut down on the lathe. Um, now the whole thing's not supporting the bearing, but enough of it to where I'm that, you know, it's no concern to me. And then what I did is if you can tell, I actually took my TIG welder out and welded just a couple spots around it. Um, and then took it and, and smoothed it out. And then by the time you get, you know, you get that hub on there, actually it has about all the engagement you're gonna need. No less engagement than the factory stuff. Um, and then all you do is you take your, you know, take your nut, put your nut back on there. Um, a lot of red Loctite. And the reason for that, if I get my, doing this one hand is you guys have to bear with me. Um, the reason for that is it actually pushes it out a little bit to the point where that nylon right there that I'm rubbing my thumb around, that's actually is, is what makes that thing a lock nut. Um, and what you'll notice when you put your nut on that it, those threads really don't come in contact with the nylon, which, um, you know, that's kind of a big deal. So, um, red Loctite, red Loctite is your friend, put a bunch of red Loctite, um, make sure you torque it a spec because you are preloading that bearing. And, uh, if you do not, you will probably go through bearings pretty quick. So do it the right way. Um, and that's pretty much it. It was really no more complicated than that. Um, this setup is a five by four and a half really really easy to find wheels for um that's what the nice part about it um those are this the jigs ss star wheels really uh inexpensive these are 17 i believe by 17 by four and a half with a mickey thompson 28 inch tall um radial tire on it um and it, it works great it comes out really good um you know as far as the back goes obviously you know my truck's got a nine inch in it so it was easy for me to get that five by four and a half. Uh, you guys with the nine and a quarters, what you're gonna have to do is pull your axles um, and find somebody that's willing to um, re-drill them. I know there are companies out there, uh, fortunately for me, I did not have to do it that, but there are guys in the past, um, you know, that have got that done. So, I mean, if stuff is out there, if you're willing, you know, if it's in your budget, you know, um, and it's, like I said, it's, it's worth it. It definitely just, you know, opens up you know a lot of options for wheels the wheels and that you know and that size uh and that bolt pattern really really easy to find um and you're really gonna like it like i said it was, it was no more complicated than that um i'm not gonna take credit for any of this um there's a lot of really smart guys out there they did all the digging um i just confirmed at work and i wanted to put a video out there just for you know anybody that's interested um you know they can do the same thing again uh three or four bigger brakes uh, definitely opens up your options to keep that in mind especially if you have a, a junkyard local to you um, so while we're in here well let's talk about the suspension on the truck so what you're looking at is a tubular upper control arm and tubular lower control arm uh, on the dakota rt facebook page there was a company a fabrication company out of canada and they did a run of these things um and I ordered a pair and got them, and I love them. Um, they work great. I did have to. It, originally, when he made them, there was a bar that went from here to here. Um, I ended up cutting it out. As you can tell, I do drag race my truck. I need as much front end suspension travel as possible. It actually gave me nine inches of travel. Um, so that's that um, right here. So here's the Viking hybrid coilovers I was talking to you guys about. Um, the top part of that coil actually fits up in the bucket. The lower part is like a coil over. Uh, it's a Warrior Series, so it is double adjustable. I believe it's like a 50-50 split. Um, 
I have a 550 rate spring, which is not for everybody because I drag raced the car or the truck. Um, I took a 10 inch spring. It compressed at three inches, which is 30%. And that's what you're looking for drag racing. Um, you know, you guys that are running these things on the street are probably going to want a at least 650. Um, the only thing about that is keep in mind, it may or may not lower, give you the ability to lower a truck, especially with stock stuff. Um, when I was on the stock stuff, I did lower the truck, not as much as I wanted, um, but it would. But again, that's because I had a 550 rate spring in it that was a softer spring. So, you know, you can do this, but just kind of keep that in mind. I don't, I don't want you to try to get a set of these and, and run into issues. Um, look in the comments below. I will actually put the part number for that, the people that are interested and want to try that out. Um, again, just be wary of that 550 rate spring. Unless you're racing your truck, you're probably not going to want that because it's just really soft on the street and floats around a lot. You can kind of curve it with, you know, turning your adjustments all the way up in your shock. Um, again, not going to be for everybody, but, you know, to each his own. Um, and that's it. It was just, you know, really quick, quick, quick video tonight. Um, I hope you guys were able to get a lot out of it. You can see a picture of the truck. I'm going to stand on the other side of the garage so you can see it. But, yeah, uh, if you guys have any other questions, let me know in the comments of things you're interested in me talking about. Um, here shortly, I'm going to start this Holly EFI uh, install. i got a Holly Dominator and some other stuff. Um, and we're going to start tearing the truck apart and going over that a little bit at a time. Um, so, again, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time.